territory, three times the size of France. The route took the competitors from the capital, Ulaanbaatar, up to the border with Siberia and down into the Gobi Desert, before returning via Karakoram, a journey of 2,500 kilometers. This year saw a change to the traditional event. Extra disciplines such as mountain biking, kayaking and orienteering were added to the competition, moving the focus away from the vehicle. The rain, which has fallen during the opening ceremony, gradually disappears as the teams pick up speed. Their destination, an ancient gathering point for the Mongolian people, a sacred spot whose history is lost in the mists of time, Turtle Rock. Behind the celebrations, each competitor knows how tough conditions will be. The beauty of Mongolia is unforgiving to the unprepared. The opening section of the competitor's journey takes them out onto the vast steppes, rolling grasslands which reach to the horizon. On the way, they attract many curious glances from Mongolians unused to such colorful machinery passing by. Luckily for the competitors, many of them know how to read a map. That's about, one. That's about one. Once they've been pointed in the right direction, they can be on their way. There's more to Camel Trophy than driving. Mountain biking is just one of the new competitions for 97, and one which the difficult terrain of Mongolia is ideally suited for. The hills and woodland provide a real challenge to even the fittest, and already a few of the competitors are finding the going a little tougher than they'd imagined. No sooner has one competition ended than a new one begins, this time kayaking, on the rocky white water streams filled with freezing mountain waters. More exercise for the lungs comes with orienteering, for many of the teams rated the hardest of all the competitions because of the mixture of exercise coupled with concentration. The technical driving test involves negotiating a difficult course of tight turns and steep slopes whilst avoiding picking up any penalties. Two teams are about to find out that too much haste can lead to costly errors. It's tempting to put your foot down on the accelerator, but not a good idea. Yeah, priority guys, listen in. Nick, they're both okay, but... <laughs> you drive very fast, and uh, left turn, and uh, yeah. see down the hill, see. Are you okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, only run and control him the way. Forewarned should have been forearmed, but taking an even bigger tumble, the Greek team follow the Russians. It's soon time to move on, though. With so much distance to cover, the days pass quickly. Time isn't the most important thing. The Land Rover Award involves getting from one point of the map to another, choosing the best available route. That means matching the distance set by Mark Day, the route coordinator. How are you doing? Oh, not bad. The aim of this exercise is basically to match the ideal distance set by event management. At the end of the Land Rover Award, it's all about who has got the ideal distance. We've got 154.53. Hey. Top goal, boys. Top goal. The changing terrain is fun to drive through and tests both the wheel clearance and windscreen wipers of the competitors' vehicles.
For much of their day, the vehicles are driving through a barren landscape with few signs of others passing before them, except ovus, shrines ensuring good luck situated on the top of mountain passes. No matter how dry some areas of the country are, in the wet, the teams find they often have to help each other out of some difficult situations. They soon learn that the winches on the front of their Land Rover discoveries have a practical purpose. Even so, sometimes it's a case of everyone lending a hand. The Mongolians often seem to drive by every bit of trouble. For hours on end, the teams journey through the Mongolian landscape, sometimes peering out through windscreens covered with melting snowflakes, sometimes choosing the best line to take through swollen rivers. One place where the weather can be guaranteed hot and sunny is the Gobi Desert. Home to many rare and exotic species, the Gobi has long been used as a shorthand phrase for the unknown. The teams know they are three quarters of the way through their journey, yet they can't afford to relax their efforts. In this flat and barren wasteland, they need to concentrate harder than ever on their route, relying on their onboard global positioning system and old-fashioned map reading skills. The results of the Land Rover Award are announced when the teams arrive at the competition site and it's Romania's turn to enjoy being the centre of attention. We're the team from Romania. The driving competition isn't over though and in the Gobi the teams have to make sure they find exact points in the desert hundreds of yards apart. Swerving between flags without touching them isn't easy when you're trying to make time. The competition also makes sure that both team members get a chance to drive. And the competitors have to follow all the rules, such as making sure they have their seatbelts on at all times. It was the Austrian pair of Stefan Oyer and Albrecht Toising who took Camel Trophy Mongolia 97. The secret of success? Relaxing, take it easy, no mistakes, good points. Yeah. We won it. <laughs> 1998 was the last year of Land Rover's involvement in